Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Martin of Tours as we celebrate the first Sunday after Christmas. Our liturgy of the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, will begin with hymn number 87. Amen. Hey. 
upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Christ came, 
so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sequence hymn is on page 84 in the hymnal. ranks ahead of me, 
because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law was indeed given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good news to the poor, the weak, the widowed, the lonely, the orphaned. To those in all places and phases of life who are in any way distressed or vulnerable. Help me to preach in a way that honors and respects those who will suffer and maybe even die today for your gospel. Help me to preach in a way that seeks not my glory, but yours. Not the growth of this church, but the spread of your kingdom. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I know I pray not for the growth of this church, but um, <laughs> you better pray a little harder. <laughs> Maybe I should do an and instead of an or. <laughs> I thank you all for being here today. You are obviously the hearty souls that after Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are still here on the first Sunday after Christmas. So I appreciate that. As I um, prepared for today, I had what I think is a new realization, although I told the people at 8 o'clock that at my age, sometimes we know things and then we forget it and we can <laughs> learn them all over again, so who knows. But um, what I realized is that on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we focus on the birth of Jesus, as it should be. We love that story and we remember it and we get filled with joy and gratitude and have wonderful celebrations. On this, the first Sunday after Christmas, we switch and instead of focusing on the birth of the baby Jesus, we focus on incarnation. On that concept that God came to earth and is somehow present in Jesus. Fully human, fully God, completely mysterious. We can't totally understand that in any way. But, but from now on in the church year, that will be a foundational truth for us. In the last month or so, I've had three people, this is not, well anyway, I've had three people come to talk to me because one um, can't really believe in God and the other two could believe in God but couldn't, couldn't conceive of how Jesus was also God. And and I applaud, I applaud their honesty. I applaud the fact that they're willing to ask questions. I love the fact that as Episcopalians, we can think, we can doubt, we can grow and question and everything. I love that. 
What I don't love is that as the priest, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I wish I had really pat things to tell people, but you know, some of some of this thing called faith is just that. It's not provable. It's not necessarily logical. It's something that within each of us is present or grows or blossoms. Well, I can't give out, I, I don't know what to say that will prove anything. I can only share ideas and uh, pray with and for people. I bought a new Bible. I know it was published at the end of October and that I had it on a, you know, I bought it ahead of time and then they sent it to me. And it might have been a foolish purchase. Um, I mean, I do have, like I'm sure most of you have several Bibles. It was an NRSV, which is the version that we read here. I have heard that the NRSV is being updated and that a new version will come out sometime in 2022. So probably, I mean, I could have waited to get this, but I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because it's a, some people term it a study Bible. Bible. It's the C.S. Lewis study Bible, or the C.S. Lewis Bible. And what that means is the editors have taken quotes from many of C.S. Lewis's writings and put them on the pages of the Bible where there are texts that have something to do with what he said, or where what he said has something to do with what's in the scriptures. And I have um, tentatively decided to focus on C.S. Lewis writings this year. Um, and so the Bible was perfect for that. Well, <laughs> I did read somewhere else, this is something I probably knew before too, but um, that if you read three chapters of the Bible a day, three and a quarter, actually it comes out, that you can read the Bible in one year. Now, if anybody gets the idea to do that, let me tell you that Psalm 119 is really long. <laughs> so I would suggest that you get ahead <laughs> before you get to Psalm 119. But so three chapters a day. Um, where was I going with that? Oh. Yes, of course. Because I would like to try to do that, that will start, I can't start before January 1st. So I put off reading of the scripture, <laughs> I did kind of peek through, um, and decided to just read the introduction, the foreword, the, you know, all the notes in the front of the book. And one of those sections was a kind of spiritual history of C.S. Lewis. And I loved this section. I won't be able to quote it to you word by word, but this is, in essence, what it said. I do have it on my phone if you want to read it word for word after church. Um, C.S. Lewis was, of course, brilliant, an excellent writer, and began his adult life as a uh, self-proclaimed atheist. He did not believe there was a God at all. He moved from atheism to be an agnostic. An agnostic says there is likely a God or some uh, creative force that is bigger than us, but I can't, agnostic is, I'm, if you go to the Latin, is no knowledge. You can't know God. So his belief was that there probably was a God, but that he couldn't know God, and that therefore God didn't know him. He was too little in all of the creation. So he went from atheist to agnostic. 
He went to materialism. Uh, I didn't look into this, but it was called spiritualism. Went through a couple other things um, and ended up being a theist. So he believed, he got to the point where he really believed that there was a God, that there had to be a God. But it was one God, and it was um, all the creative force in the universe. He could not go as far as being a Christian. He could not, um, while he could see that Jesus was a good man and a great example, he could not believe that God was incarnate in Jesus. And he stayed there for a while. Now, he met, as I'm sure you know, at a little, well, at a pub um, in England with several men of good minds in his time, one of, one of whom was J.R.R. Tolkien. They were best of friends. And Tolkien was a devout Christian. And C.S. Lewis credits Tolkien with helping him become a Christian. Now, when he was a theist, he came up with this, um, I want to say allegory, came up with this comparison um, that if, that just as Hamlet couldn't know Shakespeare, so he, as a created being, couldn't know God. Shakespeare created Hamlet, God created people, the universe, but there was no way that the preacher could know the creator. They were in two completely different realms. Well, after he um, talked, but not just one time, with Tolkien, and he started he, he started to believe that Jesus just might have had that spark of divine in him. Um, he realized that the allegory of Hamlet and Shakespeare was actually a good one. It was true that Hamlet, in his setting and in the story, didn't know anything about God, didn't know anything about Shakespeare. But Shakespeare could write into that play, into Hamlet, a character called Shakespeare, and could therefore share himself with Hamlet on Hamlet's level so that Hamlet could get to know Shakespeare. I hope I'm saying this in a good way because it, it, was, it was a light bulb going off in my head, which meant that God created us in this play called Hamlet, or this play called Life on Earth, and we didn't, we didn't know about God or anything at first, but God wrote God's self into our life through Jesus. And that is how we could get to know who God is and what God was like and that God loved us. Now, we don't have any clue of the enormity of God. We can't. But we can know of God's love, of God's personality, of God's uh, desires and ways, because God wrote God's self into the play of our lives. Amen.
When you're ready and if you're able, I invite you to stand and to join in saying the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. The Offertory Hymn can be found on page 101.
We will continue with Eucharistic Prayer D, page 372. If you're able, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and and behold in the glory of your presence they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven we acclaim you and glorify your name as we salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his, heaven, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Prince, our bishop provisional, the clergy associated with this parish, Mary, Pat, Rick, Mike, and Bill, and all who minister in your church. Remember all of your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those on our prayer list. Remember your servants Desmond and Bud and all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, and martyrs, with Martin of Tours, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give 
Thus this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the Post Communion Prayer, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated unless you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary and would like to come forward for prayer and blessing. Seeing none, are there any announcements for the good of the body? Pat has just reminded me to let you know that we will be having the Thursday Midweek Eucharist this week at 12.15. And we will have a Festival of Lights, a short liturgy on New Year's, New Year's Eve, December 31st, here. And our hope is that we will have, for people who don't have other plans and would like to stay, that we will offer a movie after the liturgy is done but it will be done in plenty of time. If you have plans at home or a party where you will be very careful of COVID, I'm sure, um, that you will be able to leave and get there in time. The people that we prayed for who had died this morning, just in case you haven't heard, are Archbishop Desmond Tutu and former member here, Bud Tyler. Two great men. Oh, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Bob Brown's sister Sandy also died this past week on Friday. We just found out. So I'll be sending a note out about that today. Can I have one other quick announcement? That the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Festival of Lights the offering that <clears throat> excuse me the offering that we traditionally do for the festival of lights is our indian our new year's eve indian godchild uh, we, we are sponsoring in addition to the children that are sponsored by other members of the parish the parish itself sponsors um, one godchild and so the offering that night will go to help pay the 250 dollar sponsorship for that child in perulia india After the blessing, our recessional hymn will be number 110. If you're able, please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace and give you joy. The Lord's blessing be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.